Hello, welcome to Project GNU. So, I'm gonna try to make a silent computer without any really proper silent components. So, I have one desktop, this Optiplex 745, relatively quiet compared to most of the other computers I own. Um, but it's 10 years old, so it needs new components that will make it less, um, not useful at all. <laughs> so, I have all of these. Um, yeah, some of them I need for stuff, and some of them I don't. So with all of those, I'm going to try to make something both useful and quiet. Um, I don't know. It should be fun, so come along with me. Um, so I think the first thing I need to do is take apart the 745 and figure out what I have to work with. So commence Project GNU. <laughs> Okay, so I got some stuff out of that system. I've got the graphics card, which is totally broken, totally very old. In fact, I'm going to try to take this apart right now. Give me a second. Okay, so I got the heat sink off. Um, I have no idea what this graphics card is. Here, let me... Yeah, I'll check it later. You can check the system components list. But it's actually really interesting like this bar here is just weird but then this you can actually sort of see it this brush like I don't know what this is I think it's a, like an anodized aluminum it's just gorgeous so I'm gonna have to do something with this even though the cooler is like tiny and then this weird like this grid pad oops this grid pattern for the heat sink is just is just weird um I guess it's so it can get airflow in both directions in different cases, but that's just super, super weird. Um, and then the chip itself, I have no idea what this is. It doesn't have a heat spreader. Um, and yeah, so that's part number one we got out. Next we have this floppy drive, which actually I'm going to keep because we have some floppy disks and it would be nice to like be able to do stuff with them. I also got like an IED cable. Um, and yeah, just standard Dell something or other. Don't really care. I got this, which is just the front I.O., which really isn't like interesting except for this. The way they did the front panel LEDs, the post, their postcode and, um, and like drive indicator and power indicator LEDs, but it's just actually really cool. It's like a plastic thing and it's just weird um and then just yeah oh and then the way dell does front io is also kind of interesting because it's a it's like a ribbon cable um from the motherboard to this and i believe they still use that same system to up until today although the cable has gotten a lot smaller the system also had some ram in it what a surprise um one gig one gig of ddr2 so two gigs total Yay, interesting. And now after cleaning off quite a bit of very poorly applied thermal compound, um, we have a CPU, which this is, there's no way you'll be able to see it, uh, maybe, no, it appears to be an Intel, well obviously Intel, Core 2 Duo um, 6600, which is super confused 2.4 gigahertz which is super confusing to me because at least according to the intel matrix or arc.intel.com there is no such thing as a core 2 duo 6600 there's a 6600s a 6600 t and a 6600 e if i remember all those letters correctly but 
There's no such thing as a 6600, so I don't I don't really know what this is. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna go into um, something else to figure out what this is. I try um, the Intel product support page or the the Intel the Dell product support page and see what it is. Um, so there are some other interesting things on this motherboard. Um, still got jumpers for CMOS clearing. Oh, oh. Actually, that's a BIOS password jumper, which why you would have that as a jumper on the motherboard is kind of strange. Um, I should probably back up a little so you can see. Uh, we've got what appears to be... Is that an intruder header? And then I have absolutely no idea what this is. Oh, wow. An internal USB. Maybe that's two, but I think that's internal USB one. Which just, just wow. Um... Motherboard battery, and some other random stuff. Like, the very strange SATA position, positions. It's like, you've got them, they've got them split apart across this power connector. Which it, in, it means that your main SATA, your main and secondary SATA, or your SATA 0 and SATA 1, are covered by the power connector. Because it goes, goes up over the thing, like, here. I'll show you. Oops. Thank you. I could understand, like, if the secondary power, or the secondary SATA, was, like, under the thingy, under the power cable, but no, you know, it ends up in the case being, like, trapped under that, and once it's, like, in the case and managed and all that, you really can't get to those SATA, it's just weird, um, and it's also kind of obstructed by the dims there, um, just all around, very interesting choices. Um, there's something else interesting is this is the semi-modern. It's I think only two generations old now Dell front panel, and then this is Very old front panel. Um, this is the one it uses, but it also has this one. I don't I don't really know why Or no, no not. This is not the front panel. This is the front panel. This is just um, Just ID um, And then random expansion slots and like Random other stuff here. Yeah. It's got actually very strange build on some of those USB ports like this one. Kind of frays out, which isn't normal for Dell. Normally they do all do this thing that the middle ones are doing. Um But yeah, I'm gonna plug this all in and see what it does. Um yeah. See if I can even get it to post now that I've got it out of the system, out of the computer. I, don't, I wasn't using a static strap, so I may have very easily have killed it. So let's try that. So I have it all set up outside the case, just so I can show you some things. Number one, it's kind of this cricket sound to this. Number two, the fan. Really freaking quiet, like impressively quiet. Um, here, if I lay it down on its silencer things. However, it's going to start getting really a lot less quiet real quick. Because this, it's on a fan curve for the processor, which is not user settable. Holy. Um, but yeah, it's going to, it's going to float, um, away. Holy. Wow. That's impressive. Um. This graphics card, I took the heatsink off, and I don't know, it's very old, it's ATI, I don't really care about it. Um, it's, I don't know. But, more importantly, the processor. Wow, okay. Alright, don't kill my fan. Um, I need this fan. There we go. Okay. The processor is, uh, I'll just turn the system off. The processor is a Core 2 Duo um, E6600, I think. On the chip, it says 6600. Um, however, E6600 is, or however, a six, just a Core 2 Duo 6600 is not actually a thing. So, based on the ordering code with arc.intel.com, it is an E6600, um, 4 meg cache, 2.40 gigahertz. Um, Actually, kind of still a capable processor. It was a very high-end pro high processor. 
um, when it launched. Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, but most importantly, it, it was a high-end processor when it launched, but it launched in Q3 of 2006, making it, in about six months, 10 years old. So, that is, is definitely not, not gonna stay around. So I'm gonna do something else with this. And then, um, I guess I'll go over the most important component here, which is this, as disgustingly dusty as it still is. Um, this heatsink is what I wanted out of here, because it, although, I mean, not, not a big heatsink, it, like, pales in comparison to anything, even a Hyper 212 Evo. It's tiny, but it is a lot bigger than, like, the average heatsink I own. Like, this is above, it's above average here. Let me show you. This is the average heatsink I own. And, yeah, it's tiny. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's pretty beefy in comparison. So I'm going to go through, take this down. I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with it. Because right now I have no bloody clue. Um, and yeah, it was just it was an interesting, interesting experiment. Yeah, yeah, this is it's ten years old. Goodbye, ten-year-old system. See you again, never, hopefully. Okay, first off, I'm actually gonna look at processors I have on hand and see if any of them work in this board, just out of pure curiosity. So first off. Here I have a Pentium D930. Um, that Pentium D930 launched in Q106, so it's officially 10 years old. So it can it can go away. Um, but just out of pure curiosity, I'm gonna look at some other stuff on it. 95 watt TDP. 95 watt. 95. Um, however, that is that is a three gigahertz base clock, which is actually pretty decent. Um, like, actually, surprisingly decent. Why don't I see actually the the socket here? I don't I don't see a socket, and I don't actually care. Um, so next, we have a Core Two Quad Q nine six five. Zero. Excuse me while I suddenly can't breathe. Um, and it has an, also a 95 watt TDP, which is also absurdly high um, by today's standards. Uh, that's LGA 775. That's right there. Why isn't it? Oh, it's PLGA 775. Um, so yeah, it's. But it launched in Q3 of 08, so it's better than that Core 2 Duo, but. Still, still not great, and 95 watt TDP. Next up, we have the original processor there, this Core 2 Duo E660, or E6600, there we go. Um, and it's PLGA 775, just like the um, Pentium. The only issue is it's a 65 watt TDP, which significantly outclasses on TDP this this uh core 2 quad here so I'm gonna have to look into that and then finally I just have an i3 550 which obviously will not work in the board because it is a check um it's well actually it's a 73 watt TDP so it's slightly more decent as far as TDP goes um, but it's a FCLGA uh, 1156, so yeah, that's that's certainly not going to work in that socket. But I'm going to see, I'm going to try this, um, gosh, I can't see that, uh, this Core 2 Quad, I think that's which one this is, yeah, that's the Core 2 Quad. Um, I'm going to see if this works at all on this board, uh, but it's a 95 watt, 5 watt TDP, so it'll probably catch on fire. Oh, the power supply will, rather. But anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna stupidly try it anyway. Okay, I'm booting it. 
I've got a solid amber light, some other postcode shenanigans. Um, ow, I just cut the tip of my finger off in a desperate attempt to cool this, once again, 95 watt TDP chip. I'm just holding a fan over it. Um, but, I mean, the computer turns on. I took out the graphics card, but apparently the it does not work with the integrated graphics, and I'm going to have to turn this off real quick, because holy mother of that's spinning up, up quickly. It's not turning off. Ah. Oh, oh, thank. Ah. Oh, oh. Okay. So, it's also raining, if you can hear that. So I'm going to insert a graphics card and see if it works now. But, wow. Okay, let me, let me just touch it. That got a little hot. Um, it's after it's I've given it time to cool down. So, I'm going to install a graphics card. I'm going to try to boot it again. Okay, graphics card installed. And by the way, just for reference, this has a max uh, watt output of something ridiculous. I can't, I had three, it's a 305 max wattage. So, that's, uh, I don't believe that's long output either. I believe that's just burst output. So, yeah, that's why fires are definitely a possibility. We're going to try it again. See if it'll get through post this time. Fan's certainly a lot slower. It looks like we're going to stay on this amber LED. Again, let me check. Fan is definitely loud. Let me set it down there. So, ooh, that's getting hot whole 95 watts dissipated by absolutely nothing. Um, wow, yeah. It's actually kind of cool to see how fast this fan can get. Like, That's just ridiculous compared to its normal speed. Um, but yeah, it works, but there's no real reason for it to work. So I'm going to go ahead and switch out to something new. i um, actually going to start with a new... Wow, that's loud actually going to start with a new processor or a new entirely new system. I'm going to try this cooler on it so that should be fun. I'm looking at this computer now and would you look at that there's there's thermal paste in the socket uh, so I'm going to try to clean this out. I don't know how it's going to go. I'm starting to get really tired and really dizzy. And my camera's dying. So I'm going to record this, and then I'm going to charge my camera and probably go to sleep. And I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, except it's 3 o'clock. Oops. So I've been doing other stuff, such as copying this, the yesterday's footage over, and I learned I messed something up, and it looks really, really awful. This probably doesn't look much better, but I turned the settings to auto, because apparently they were on uh, manual adjust, and I hadn't... manual adjust doesn't work very well for video, so... yeah. Um... But... I've got an SD card in... I've got yesterday's SD card, I'm copying footage. Um... But, you see, the interesting thing is the SD card reader I use, I don't have a USB one, plugs into the USB header on the motherboard, and it's also really, really loud outside, sorry, on the motherboard. But then I also have this USB thing, it's a USB case adapter for a computer that I generally use for my keyboard and mouse, um, because reasons, because I fill up all my USB ports, um, and that bandwidth. I want it, so I don't use a thingy. Um, so I'm using this outside of my case. I had to unplug my keyboard and mouse, and then I'm using a controller to do all my, all my mouse movements. Um, so yeah, it's taking me a while. Um, also, my, my personal computer is just a disaster right now. Oops. So I need to work on some other... I needed to work on some other stuff, and... I noticed something very interesting. The i5-550, 
or i5 i3 550 in these computers and the core 2 duo uh something or other i can't actually remember what it is anyway i'm pretty sure those are close equivalents so i'm gonna run some pc mark 8 on both this one and one of these i'm gonna have to get one of these working because none of them work right now but i know some of them have the ability to work so I need to get some of those working, I need to run PC Arcade on this one, and I'll either be back or time lapse of trying to get one of these to post, or even, well not even post, just be stable. Well obviously post it, I should stop. So, I just put together that 780. It should work, although my test platform is currently set up with this running PC Mark 8, so I have no way of knowing. Um, so I'm gonna wait for that. I'm gonna go walk the dog, probably put this back together because the footage finally finished downloading. Um, so yeah, I'll see you when I've done that. Hello, it's been a long time since I recorded, like, last time I recorded it was like, I think it was 3.30, and now it's dark out, so yeah, um, lots of computers, and by dark out I mean 11.30, lots of computers that I've worked on, and by lots I mean six, so these six 780s, I've found some things about, out about them, found it the, out that they outperform 980s, which was not expected, but now that I think about it, it kind of was. Um, and yeah, these two are dead due to dead power supplies. That's kind of kind of in the grave now because power supplies are bloody expensive. Um, these two both work perfectly fine. They're both completely put together other than a uh, hard drive because I don't have many of those right now. And then these two are both displaying error code 3, which is CPU troubles. So I'm going to look into that. Um, and yeah, I know, and I know this seems kind of sidetracked from the original project, but I promise there are reasons. Um, so I need components of a 980 probably because the TDP on the 780s is just way too high um, to cool with this system. Oh, I have thermal paste on my hand. Um, well, I'm so sidetracked. Anyway, yeah, I need the internals with 980, and to do that I need a 780 working, and some other things and stuff, and complicated, and... Uh, um, so, eventually, I should get this to actually work, um, but I'm going to work on one of these 780s and I'm going to figure out what's wrong with it, and I'll get back to you once I've done that.
Okay, so I just finished that. It turns out it was the power supply um, itself, which, yeah, I'm not really surprised. Those power supplies are awful. Five out of seven 980s, or not 980s, 780s that I have, the power supply is dead. So, yay! Um, but I think I'm going to end the episode here because it's late, I'm tired, I've got a headache, and yeah, the episode is probably super long by now. Um, so yeah, if you thought my camera handling was awful, if you thought my camera is awful, if you thought everything was awful, then you can leave a dislike. But if you thought this was enjoyable for some reason, then you can leave a like. Um, that's, yeah, that's about it. I'll probably do more of these videos, so if you want to see them, you can subscribe. And, yeah, I think that's about it. Thanks for watching.